Je demande au prochain well, so I'm asking the next speaker to join me for the last presentation. What will emerge with the spread of Fogel's technology? Philip, Michel, Michel Lefranc, head of the development project for the software environment, and Thomas Pano, OP3FT legal expert. Alors, messieurs, je vous demande vraiment l'exercice. So, gentlemen, I'd really like you to be brief. I apologize, but there's a lot of discussion, very exciting topics to cover. We underestimated the time it took for the presentations, and I'm sorry for that. But I shoulder the responsibility. I did not ask the speakers to be brief, because this is a very important a moment in the Forgans project. Philip, what will happen with the spread of Forgans technology? Thank you for giving me the floor. Um, to be brief, that is essential. Let's be forward looking and take a cold view of the different aspects that will accompany the spread of Forgans technology, starting, of course, with Forgan sites that will appear. Slides, please. Donc, rapidement et so briefly, we've seen at the previous Forgan technology conferences and in the relations we had with the members of the internet system that there are different ways of developing Forgan sites. We'll see sites that are static, others dynamic. I refer you back to the technologies revealed at Forgan Technology 5 last February. At the start of uh, Forgan sites that were um, encoded manually, hand coded, some uh, believe in that only, and little by little, as tools are available, we will see sites that are written using authoring tools. A graphic interface that's more or less simple, sometimes it's a complicated tool, so that we can design for against tools without entering in the code. For those who don't like XML, or who dislike HTML, they can use, well, at the time it was Dreamweaver and the others of that sort. But it's a very simple software that allows you to write, to edit without entering any code. We'll see new experiences. Thanks to this, uh, fully determined by publishers, uh, for again, sites have uh, take on forms that are not governed by the browser's form, so that there will be new experiences without any limits, uh, apart from, except for, for rendering, but in terms of form, shape, or transparency. New experiences that can apply to an unlimited number of topics. Just like 20 or 25 years ago, when we asked Tim Overly what his technology was for, he said it was to share research. Quite simply, I think he would have answered that. Research to be shared between different geographic areas. That's why it's rectangular primarily. We could imagine some uses of programs, but it's the imagination of members of internet sites that will make it possible to roll out focus technology in different sites. We spoke about blogs, health, fashion, news. Considering that Forgan sites have a graphic capabilities that are superior, visually, visually 
it can be extremely appealing and in exchange for that it may be a bit weaker from a textual aspect because the available space is smaller so on a given page at any rate so we'll see surprising things with websites of different sizes and shapes that we can't even imagine today that's for personal sites I'm thinking of those in this auditorium who have the ability to design, program, and create content. They can have a ball with this. And we'll have grouped sites, because they can be published by the same publisher. Maybe a group of people, a company, an association, or the like. These sites, published by the same entity, will have shared several things in common. The author, of course, but also differences can be in the, on different topics. Foreground technology has made provisions for that. With the topology of Foreground's addresses, you can group different sites, different sites in terms of content and look, under the same umbrella that we call the Foreground's network. In other words, the part before the star. That part before the star may be identical to the author of the group of sites, but it may also be a trademark, a generic name, a geographical name, an imaginary name, and as we have seen before, in any language. So the idea is that not only a personal personal sites will be developed, but there'll also be a new category of objects on the internet with these groups of sites. These do not exist today. We have families of uh, applications or websites, but the ability to group under a single structure with one name, the name before the star is common, that doesn't exist today. So that will emerge, I think there are about some 30 Forgans names that have already been registered, and some probably were done for that purpose. You can continue on the types of sites, corporate sites, of course, more institutional, e-commerce sites. We don't have time today, but in the future, we'll talk about security features for secure transactions on foregone sites. We could very well imagine in the future a merchant saying that I will create a foregone site to buy uh, shoes or camera or whatever, but also for microtransactions. From what we have heard about hashing, or in Africa and elsewhere, the connected, connected devices are becoming transactional devices, and you need an interface for that. The more secure the interface is, the greater trust you can place in the transaction, and the more there will be uh, great possibilities for the market. Today we spoke very little about this, but some other time, intranets. We all know, well, there are three categories of Forgan's networks, public networks whose names and the word uh, Forgan or its transcription in other languages. Another category, dedicated Forgan's network names. And the third will be used in a company's intranet. It may be used simply, for example, and the internal directory in a company of, with 20,000 people. Instead of having a complex interface that may be uh, presented on different types of screens, you can imagine a very simple foreground site that can have quick access to that information. So, etc. The limit, apart from time, is your imagination. 
sur les sites Frogan. Thank you, Philip, about Frogan's sites. A wide variety of sites and user experiences yet to come, but also services around these sites, Philip. Yeah. This is something we often talk about when speaking about the Internet ecosystem or when we answer questions on the Internet ecosystem. There are many services that the Internet ecosystem needs or will need to facilitate browsing or creating foregone sites. I'll mention a few. First of all, search engines or a directory. In other words, how do you find Frogan sites? We will see the emergence of search engines. For example, today, indexing Frogan sites is extremely simple. Frogan sites is a set of XML sites. There are no tags in the sense of the web, but it's easier to index a Frogan site than a mobile application. For example, we could imagine in indexing services or tools for searching for Forgan sites that could look on websites, mobile applications, Forgan sites, quite simply, because Forgan sites are identified quite simply by scanning the XML site. We could imagine, well, you know that the FSTL software library enables page rendering. So you can imagine a directory or a search engine for foregun sites display not only the address of the results, but also uh, a preview of the site. It's a new user experience. Instead of having only text polluted by advertising sometimes, you could have both the text and also a preview of what the foregun sites look like in the results, thereby making it easier for users to select the site they prefer. So the FSDL software library is made for that as well. Not only can you access the content of foregun sites by their addresses, but also the host, the home page. You can also use uh, information data, where, for example, for a given address, the site is intended for all, uh, all um, for everyone or for a major target to develop a thematic directories excluding sites intended for adults, or quite the opposite, focusing on that. As in the case of China, these adjustments with foregans will allow you to determine or identify a list of authorized countries or banned, banned countries, facilitating publishing sites in China with strong regulations as in China. So indexing. Over the past 15 years, we have learned to use it. Well, we took it as a natural service, but it's not that natural. But Forgan's technology facilitates or will give birth to new aspirations by existing players or newcomers who may say that thanks to these tools, I can create a directory service or a service with search engines for Fogan sites. Another example, and I will stop at that. These two, well, these two are questions we often hear. What about advertising? Advertising, well, may be necessary if you wish, but in actual, is a necessary evil, if you wish. But publicity is possible on Fogan's. If you have a site for cars, you can advertise car makes, car brands. There's no problem with that. It's just that that service will not be built in into Forgan's technology. The service will have to be developed 
for advertisers on the one hand and for publishers on the other. That's also what happened with the web in general at the start. If you wanted to have a banner, they would send via email uh, a website publisher. And by and by, we'll have tools that will make it easier to go and to pass ads on for against sites. The formats are not the same. They will be less textual and smaller by definition as compared to a foregone site. These formats will not be intrusive. Recently, and we're still seeing this, we have seen the advertising war with ad blockers on the one hand and advertisers on the other. One reason for this war is that they're imposing messages that can sometimes be intrusive on mobile devices. For example, we've seen video advertising that are triggered uh, on mobile web pages. That will be far more regulated than for forgans. There'll be no intrusive advertising on forgans. Also, from a technical standpoint, on a forgan site, all data on a given site is stored in a single directory in a given server. It is not possible to be totally held uh, not liable as a publisher, as a publisher by saying that on my site, my ad people gave me an ad that I have no control over. That's possible on the web, and that's exactly how it works. But that, that's, <coughs> but on Forgan's site, that is not possible. Advertising on a site will reside on the server leading to that site, creating a sense of responsibility for the editor or the publisher, who will say that by definition I must first retrieve the ad on my own machine, and I have control, therefore, over that machine. So these are the main features why the ad industry will be interested in foregans technology because it enables targeting messaging, messages that will be visible and published for all users by definition, provided that they, are, they uphold the uh, responsibilities that are very different from what we have today. I'll stop there, Philip. Of course, there are other examples that we can see on your slide. Oh, yes, online payment and affiliations. Uh, there are two new models to be invented, but there's nothing to prevent developing this type of platform with Forgan technology. Thank you, Philip. Michel, another important point, I'd like you to be synthetic on this. Recording for the uh, creation of, of YouTube tools that will facilitate the creation of Frogan sites. Well, I won't repeat myself. After all, time is counting. Here, otherwise, I would uh, present the way that the op 2 publishes the the... FSDL library, which, as Philippe says, is constitutes the rendering engine of the Focus player, and which constitutes an interesting element for people who want to publish uh, uh, user uh, uh, authoring tools. In this section, we're explaining in detail the multiple languages that interest uh, to, uh, tool developers. This platform is assured by the fact that our development is written in C. So it's these developers that we address when we publish these uh, C uh, software libraries. You can see on this slide that they are uh, free of charge. You can download them on the op 2 uh, site, and that there's no limit uh, 
to the diffusion of tools that you can do with it. There are no royalties to play, pay, there's no royalties to pay, uh, there's no uh, prerequisite on the types of tools that you would develop. And, and let me remind you that the cross-platform aspect of it is assured at that, nev at that level. On this slide, we think, of course, of uh, desktop tools or mobile tools, but, of course, also, we can imagine uh, online services that make use of these uh, libraries. For example, think about a search engine that shows a, 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 a vignette version of a Frogan site on the, on the site. This is the sort of thing that we can get by using these C libraries for developing an online service. Uh, thinking, keeping in mind the server technology, uh, followed then by a web interface or, or by a mobile interface. Of course, there's no limit on the diffusion of these tools imposed by the OP3FT. And, and we trust developers who are very creative to, on one hand, uh, develop all sorts of uh, tools uh, or extending existing tools or, or uh, to the limits of the imagination of the, uh, of the developer and the user. Thank you, Michelle. So yes, Arthur's tool to encourage the development of Frogan's site. As uh, Philip was saying, that's mostly for people who don't write a lot of code. And that would be for sites available online, on mobile devices, and on desktops. But Frogan's is, a web, is an internet site hosted on a server, and that needs an identifier. Can you give us your vision of all this, Thomas? Yes, I have 50 seconds. So we'll move very fast on registration issues because this is something that we talked about already. Uh, FCR account administrators manage the registration of Frogan's addresses and networks for one person, 10, a hundred, a thousand, ten million people. All you need is to create an account. It's very easy. No accreditation is needed. You just open the account. And then you can use the site either with uh, the HTML version of the FCR API will allow accessing and administer these along their life, but you can also use an SDK to automatically access the API to offer a client interface that can be far more performant and which will allow clients to make to log in their registration requests, for instance. Okay, skipping on this because that's very similar to what already exists in the domain name registration world. What's a bit new in our system, in our ecosystem, is the monitoring of Frogan's address registration because this is something that we established in May, in May this year, and we have service providers monitoring the registration of Frogan's addresses for matters linked to trademark protection, company protection, or just for monitoring purposes. FCR public data is readily available, free of charge, doesn't require any login or any registration. They can be used very easily. So, and they can be processed the way you want because these are standard formats which can easily be processed. And to support the members of the ecosystem, we have a list which is available on the SCR operator's site so that you 
can see who are the monitoring service providers and you can monitor your trademark in the Frogan's addresses. Now on top of these two members of the ecosystem you can have all sorts of intermediaries in order to provide advice on recordings, on how you can manage naming in Frogan's addresses and networks, to advise a trademark with regards to their naming policies, how they can manage their Frogan's addresses and networks. There are the hosting parties similar to those working with the web because uh, we'll post contents so they need to be present on servers. So there again we have intermediaries which can be, like for FCR administrators, they can be just hosting service providers but you can also have hosting uh, facilities in a more exhaustive package with assistance to Frogan sites uh, creation so this could be a more exhaustive offering. And of course this list never ends really. You can think of any type of services, any type of idea related to Frogan's technology addressing and this remains to be invented. We thought about many things but we can't think about everything so it's up to the ecosystem to be motivated. Thank you so much Thomas. Thank you all.